Earlier I discussed how to use a TL431 with an NPN pass transistor to make a constant current source. I substituted a TIP120 power Darlington over a plain everyday NPN transistor. Now we are going to up the game and use the TIP120 to drive an even larger power transistor for higher current output. We will be looking very close at power, voltage drops, and how to, and how to calculate your power input versus your power output. All right, let's look closely at our circuit. The biggest difference is I connected in Q2. This is an NPN power transistor. The cathode of the TL431 is connected to the base of the TIP120. Q1, the emitter of Q1 goes to the base of Q2 and ties back to the reference. From R, which I changed to a 10 ohm value, that is connected from reference to anode. The value of R maintains this voltage that I this is the measured voltage, 2.46 volts approximately, which maintains a voltage of 1.82 volts from the base of Q1 to the emitter of Q2. Let's look at our current flow to understand this circuit. Let's start with this 4.7K resistor that goes back to the source. This supplies the base current for Q1, but it also provides the cathode current for the TL431. The base current controls the um, conduction of Q1. So the, what we, the collector current plus the base current becomes IE ie of q1 becomes ib that's the base current of q2 and the emitter current of q2 is the sum of all the currents in this case i've sort of rounded it off to about two, it's about 250 milliamps or so and when i built the circuit and measured it by golly it was 250 milliamps because it all comes back together over here in the end. Let's note, for example, that there is a small current IK from cathode to anode. I disregard that to a large degree. And I measured the voltage from the base of Q1 to the emitter of Q2 and came up with 1.82 volts. This makes sense because we have, what, three PN junctions in series and each junction drops um, operates at 0 0.6 volts. All right, let's notice our voltages. Three, actually you have, here's your voltage in, 19.5 volts. In the current path is mainly is we have Q2, the 10 ohm resistor R, and a 10 ohm load. So in a series circuit, the currents through each device is going to be the same. That's common Ohm's law. The other difference though is the input voltage will be divided. Part of the voltage will be across Q2, part of the voltage again across will be across R, R resistor, and part of the voltage will be across the 10 ohm resistor. Turns out it measured and calculate at 250 milliamps through a 10 ohm resistor is going to give you 2.5 volts. And again, 250 milliamps through a 10 ohm resistor is going to give you 2.5 volts here. With 19.5 volts going in, and this accounts for 5 volts, Q2 is going to drop 14.5 volts. Let's look cl more closely at this. All right, here is the actual circuit as I used it. This time is a little different. I built everything into a circuit board. I used these various screw blocks for connections. I used screw connectors down here so I can change out resistors. 
here is my Q2, this large pass transistor. It just happened to be the one I had. Here is a uh, 10 ohm load. That's a 10 ohm, 10 watt resistor. This down here is a 10 ohm, 5 watt resistor. Here is my power coming in 19.5. Here is my TIP120. I do not need a heat sink on it because the voltage is being dropped across this other transistor. It must be heat synced. And the little black dot there is your TL431. I went ahead and did my calculation. 2.5 divided by 10 comes out to 0.25 or 250 milliamps. On the amp meter up here, I got 250 milliamps, as near as I can tell. That is very, very close. Now we must address the issue of power drops. How much power is coming in from the power supply? Well, my current from the power supply through the pass transistor, through R, and through the load is 250 milliamps. 19.5 volts times 250 milliamps is 4.875 watts. So the power supply is, is producing almost 5 watts in the circuit. Let's go over here to the load. 2.5 volts at 10 ohms. Okay, voltage times current, 2.5 volts times 250 milliamps is 625 milliwatts. This is also going to be a 10 ohm, and it's also going to be, excuse me, 625 milliwatts. But that's about, I think, 1.25 watts or so. What happened to the rest of the 3 watts and something. The other 3.625 watts was dropped in the heat sink of Q2. That's because 14.5 volts was dropped across the transistor times 250 milliamps. That's 3.625 watts. In other words, 75% of my available power was dropped as heat on Q2. The lesson is here, if you are using a constant current source, consider it, considering that your load um, is what produces the output voltage, look at the output voltage you expect and add oh, probably 5 to it, and, that, and you should get an input voltage close to that. The output voltage, 2.5 volts, is a long ways from 19.5. All right, our obvious solution to the problem is to input a lower input voltage. I dropped it to 8 volts. The current through the circuit is fixed. That is a function of the 10 ohm resistor, 2.5 volts divided by 10. That is fixed. I'm still dropping the same wattage on the R resistor, 625 milliwatts. On the load resistor, I'm still dissipating 625 milliwatts. It still has 2.5 volts. It still has 2.5 volts. But now, I'm only dropping 3 volts and 750 milliwatts of heat across the pass transistor. If you took the... Um, power here, 625, 625 milliwatts, plus 625 milliwatts, plus 750 milliwatts, comes right back to the 2 watts input. The 2 watts was derived from 8 volts times 250 milliamps is 2 watts. It adds right back. If you take the individual voltage drops, 2.5 volts plus 2.5 volts, that's 5, plus 3 volts makes it 8, it comes back to the input voltage. Alright, what I did, I still used the 19.5 volt power supply going in to this. This is a variable switching power supply that I built. This project is up also on my website, and it is something like 95% efficient. So I can draw as much as an amp and a half off of this device 
and the heat sink over here barely gets warm. It's about 90, 95% efficient. And so what I did was drop the voltage to this high efficiency switching voltage regulator. And then I applied the 8 volts over here. So instead of sending up tons and tons of heat, I, redu I reduced my uh, power input and I cut all the wasted heat out of the system. Here's the schematic and I'll leave a link for the uh, power supply down in the description. And that ends this section here. We'll be doing another part two to this but I'm going to really jump the power up and we're going to recalculate in the next video 1.25 amps instead of 250 milliamps. Thanks for viewing the video.